You want to do it? No, wait, hold on. That one, he's back. What? Ladies and gentlemen, we have Sam Smith. Oh, won't you stay with me? Uh, we have Sam Smith, who's going to do an intro for this latest episode of... Carmudgeon. Hello, I'm a British singer. You have... Man. Yes, hello. In hello. a lonely hour, I'm not the only one. Hello. Yes. Yes. Hello. Okay. I, God, I'm awful. What? Wrong Sam Smith. Oh, shit. Yeah. Yes. Fuck. Cars are great. Oh, perfect. Okay. Yeah. Use cool. that voice. I want you to use the full. Can you do an announcer voice? Nope. Can you try? Nope. But I can clap. <laughs> if you'd like to. If... Hello, and thank you for calling the podcast network of Haggerty. This is the Carmudgeon Show. If you'd like to talk to Derek. O primer ocho. All right. Anyway, do an intro. Uh, welcome to Car Mudgeon. It's Jason Camisa. It's Derek Tam Scott. There's cars. There's mudgeoning. When you put them together, you get this show. Don't like it? Go listen to something else, motherfucker. Like your podcast, for example. Oh, yeah. Like Driven to Fail. Also on the Haggerty Podcast Network. Want to listen to people admit that they're assholes? That's my show. Actually, no, that's not. Please come on the show. It's great. <laughs> Basically, we just admit that we're assholes. <laughs> anyway, we're back on Car Mudgeon. We have Sam Smith, our esteemed guest with us. We have not yet put you on the wall, but I will at the conclusion. I just can't be bothered. So excited. Um, but do I have to write like your full given Christian name or can I just say Sam Smith and have people think maybe Isn't this it uh, decidedly unchristian? Well, it's so your mother I was Jewish. You, your, mo your mother was Jewish and was one that of my favorite people Jewish. on planet Earth. It does. And she I was, was raised Jewish. She was very fucking mad at me the first time she found this out. We, I found out that Sam was Jewish when we started working with each other. And I'm like, there are no Jews in Kentucky. Like, because I'm from Not New York true. and they're all in New York and Boca. It's just the way it is. And so I'm like, there are no Jews. He's like, well, technically I'm a half Jew. So he became Samuel L. Proctor, Kentucky half Jew Smith. True fact. And that is in his, in my context of this day. <laughs> and you sign your emails to me. I, okay, 0 0.5 J. It's okay. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. it's just a thing. Don't it's encourage him. Human. Don't encourage him. And his him. mother got very, very cross at me for that for describing him as half jewish yes he's yes. totally jewish i'm like that's not funny my mother also said you're the most profane friend i have which is saying a lot let me tell she you like you a lot i loved your mom i know mm -hmm. alice was amazing alice mm -hmm. owned my e30 and uh e30 325 i wagon she did if you remember i had to move to california and i could only take one car with me so i liquidated everything and the, the wagon could only go to someone whom i trusted and who i thought would sell it back to me mm -hmm. and alice was that person so yeah, for three and a half years loved it and was happy to sell it to you happy to keep it i will loved never it. forget the phone call on the way back Jay, hey jason hey alice how you doing i'm good but i I'm thinking, yes, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> so that was, that was how long that conversation took. I'm like, just tell me how much I'll send you a chance. Out. But anyway, um, okay. On this episode, we're going to talk about things like civic types are ours, integrity type ours, golf ours, our ours, 43 AMGs. I don't even remember what the hell to, are we about? GRs. GRs. Oh my God. Is this the R episode? Yeah. 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 <laughs> this is the welcome to the pirate episode of the Carmudgeon show. And now our favorite time. Of the episode. Oh, what's that? Watch this. Oh, okay. Clap hyphen. I did you know, it. you need to look at him and just be like, I'm not your monkey. I don't perform for you. This but he a does. circus. He does this every week. And the audience, I think, probably thinks it's a joke, but it really could just be this simple. It could just be like, <laughs> like a couple of weeks ago, Paolo just clapped in the background. He's like, it's not difficult. And yet Derek does this weird, like, like Judy Bloom, I must, who was it that Live did? I truth, must. Derek, don't let I'm, him break you down. You're beautiful. No matter what they say. Yeah. No matter how poorly I, I clap. I must increase my bust. What was that? What? Was that, are you there, God? It's me, How Margaret. How did tits come into it? Look, have you seen, okay. Do you remember, did you not read Judy Bloom's? I forget it are too. You tits there, always come into yeah. it. Hello. <laughs> um, but, but, no, there was a whole exercise that you did that was like, I must, I must, I must increase my bust. And I think it was a Judy Bloom book called, Are You There, God? It's me, Margaret. Anyway, he does that, the tit increasing clap. That's why he's such voluptuous bosom. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I'm glad. Well, I think he's, I think he's a very good clapper. Is that, is that a... Is that an underwire? <laughs> just release an entire episode that's that repeated over and over again for 60 minutes. Just <laughs> boop, 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 boop. Special loop, loop it, loop it. So I'm so glad we brought you back. And by the way, this is all being recorded, so that's being used. So I said something off color, and Sam thinks we should do an entire episode with that on, on, on repeat. Um, I don't think I know. You are never going to be invited back here. That's not true. We brought you back because you're fun. Oh. And you have that announcer voice. I do, kind of. Maybe, sure. Sure. And are all the things recording now, Paula, or are we allowed to? The A cam's going. Okay. So right. anyway. That's all that matters in um, case of emergency. Case of emergency. Yes. Um, okay. So you pulled up in a new daily driver. 
Yes, new old daily driver. I feel like, and I don't want to be accusatory here, we each chase each other around in circles with our vehicles because I drive the 308 GT4 that you used to have and I bought it from you. Mm-hmm. And I had an e-golf, so you had to buy an e-golf. Mm-hmm. And then you bought a GTI because I said such things about good things about Mark Sevens. Well, because and, I liked my e-golf and well, so I and wanted And then I have a 2316 and you have a 2316. Yes, that's true. And I had a 129 and now you have a 129. I'm Are on you my trying second R129. Are you trying to be me? And I had a uh, C36 as well before. Yes, when I had my C43. Don't you laugh over there, Sam Smith. I didn't say What do you drive, Sam Smith? What do I drive? I have a very shitty, rusty 2002 BMW, a TII. I have a Mark 7 that we hauled. Injected. Yeah, another another Mark 7 that I forced the sale of. Yeah, yeah. it actually came from the dealer near your house. Yeah, I picked it up. up. I actually picked it up from the dealer, if you remember. It's got. It's red. It's a Golf S. It's GTIS with a, a turny thing. I yeah. I actually Good picked car. it up from the dealer for you. Slick top. You great. were part of the 31 Mark 7s that I sold in a six week period. <laughs> <laughs> I was the now, number one salesman s- at my Volkswagen. You say that it's like a scarlet and, letter. Like now, you know, now I'm going to be spotted in the public, and people are just going to go look at him. He fell victim. He victim. 31 cars didn't make a fucking <laughs> cent. Why I'm so stupid. Anyway, so you have Mark 7 GTI yeah. O2. Okay, so pile. I got the O2. I uh, have a Mark 7 GTI that uh, we ferry the kids around in. Have a really shitty E83 X. Three that's like Frankfurt Airport rental car stripper spec, it's manual <laughs> well, slick top. Nice. I mean, it was kind of one manual, manual slick. So six speed slick top, uh, not vinyl. leather. Ooh, oh yes, no, did not even get, didn't even get fog lights. Has manual climate. Doesn't have the little pop up like glove box up top. It's really difficult. Um, <laughs> it's eaten. It's got. It's you know, e eighty threes are basically an e forty six and an e thirty nine. Had a baby, and so it's got. And the baby got um, fat and tall. Oh, baby got fat and tall, and it's got two hundred thousand miles on Holy it. Holy shit! I bought it at one hundred ninety. Came out of Chicago, so everything's rusted. What motor is it? Uh, it's two five M fifty four. Okay. That's yeah, which cool. is like enough in an E46 yeah. and not enough at all in a car that's taller and heavier. It's fine. That's but it's like cheap. an E46 wagon, kind of. Yeah, yeah kind of. Um, basically, it's there for the kids to puke and piss and, you know, lick on. Um, wow. It's, it's, it's child ownership sounds really <laughs> amazing. Can I tell you how reproducing <laughs> slash caring for another person is great? No. Um, I've got that. I uh, have a couple of motorcycles. I have an old 90s Ducati and an old 70s BMW Airhead. What kind of Ducati is it? A 900 SS. Mm-hmm. It's a $1,800 CR, so they, I think it was called, like the CR might have stood for Club Racer or whatever, but it's, I look at Cunt it. Rag? Costa Reduzio. They pulled out the cost out of it. Cunt so Rag. Like, yeah. Cunt uh-huh. Rag, sure. Yeah. Okay. Have that. Um, they bought for 1800 bucks and went through the whole motor, went through the frame, went through the suspension. It was a project from a couple years ago, repainted it. And uh, have a, have half of a really shitty BMW 1800 Ti, a 67 that sits in Chicago. And has been I believe I stored years. that too for you. For no, different, different, different class of sedan. Okay. I've had three of them. They're awful. And um, <laughs> awfully different from the two doors. Yeah, oddly enough. So the, the four doors. Oh, so this the, is fascinating. Yeah. I had no idea that the sedans were any different than the oh, two doors. So the four doors came first, right? So mm-hmm, not right. to go down the rabbit hole. God, I, stop. Why me. not? No. This is what we do. Go okay. Yeah, right. Right. Learn right. some so, stuff. Once upon a time, there were dinosaurs. When a man loves a woman, reproduction happens. Um, no, so in the late 50s after the Who war... What? brought this motherfucker in? Anyway, sorry. <laughs> in a world where Jason Camisa has a podcast, sometimes people come on it and don't shut the fuck up. Um, no, so after the war, uh, BMW's circling like everybody else. They nearly went bankrupt. Mercedes-Benz almost bought them. The Quant family comes in. Big injection of cash. They had one Hail Mary. They drew up a car. That car Neue was... Klasse. The, Neue Klasse, right? You know. So those things were, so car was designed to see a, a small version of the M10, 1.6, right? Really understressed, um, really almost prehistoric, even by like 60s BMW standards. But that gave birth to the CS Coupe, the E9, gave birth to the, to the O2 series, uh, kind of sort of gave birth to the, the E3, the Bavaria, yeah. you know, all those yeah. things. Uh, but the crazy thing is, it's, it's like a mix of... So it's a mix of all of those parts. And the O2s were so cost cut. It was just a, here, we need more money. Let's make more car, choppy, choppy. That, you know, uh, an NK is like a stiffer, better built, um, s- s- much slower. But, you know, the roll centers are a little better. The suspension geometry is a little better. The steering's a little better. Because it was all, like, the car was built for everything that's on it. And so they're, they're deeply charming things that are, you know, in a lot of ways deeply unloved because most of them. So that makes it sound better than a 2002. Shh, don't tell people making expensive. It's also the only vintage BMW left that's like halfway cheap anymore. But 
Mm. Anyway, so I have a shitty one of those uh, that I haven't seen in 10 years. And I had an Integra Type R until about a year and a half ago and I sold it. And that was a sad day and uh, that's about all I have. Um, I, there's probably something else. I don't remember. But. It's okay. That's, I mean, that's a reasonable number of I vehicles. Had, spe- the, the haven't seen in 10 years, do you treat your kids the same way? I'm just... Well, just that's the problem, sure. right? I had kids and all this. I started to sell shit. Yeah. I had an XJ40. I had a bunch of random crap. You had an XJ40? Oh, it was good. It really? Was so good. What flavor? Oh, it was a no, there weren't any sovereign. It was, it was a sovereign. It was... God. Steaming pile of shit. As well oh, as. no. This was... Oh, God. So this was a one owner... Two, one or two owner, like 40,000 mile car that I found when we lived in Seattle. And I kept for six months or so, nine months or so, and then decided it was a bad idea and ended up selling it. Tony Kuroga from Car and Driver came up and looked at it and I had spent like, I, I don't know, two or three months sorting everything, like chasing, getting windows working, getting climate working, like fixing vacuum leaks and getting the island Was it right. an early one with the digital dash or 90? It was late. Yeah, okay. So it was late. Anyway, Tony shows up the day he shows up to look at it. The lock stopped working, the windows stopped working. One window gets stuck down. It idled funny. Anyway, somebody sold it and it's their problem now. <laughs> Smart. Yeah. So. Oh, there we go. But the it's point is, stuff. you have kids, you sell things, so don't have kids. Oh, Christ, this stupid television. If anyone here works for, what is this company, Samsung? Fuck you. Um, it's always trying to detect a device so it can. Do you remember this the first 200 times we were here? Every time you turn on this TV, it sort yes, of connects to the internet. Yes, so we play a TV show, some random TV show. It plays TV show. Yes. And it wouldn't stop. There was no way to stop it. Anyway. Wait, we were talking about your Mark 7. Yes. Yes, Your which I'm, uh, which sold on Bring a Trailer last week. We don't know how much because it hasn't sold yet, but because this is the magic of time travel future, through, yeah. through podcasting. Uh, so I sold the Mark 7 and I'm now going to be daily driving an old new Mercedes, new old Mercedes. Again, uh, following in my footsteps, you have a W202C43 AMG. Yes, to replace the other one that I had, which, which was, was a six-cylinder one. Six-cylinder. Uh, so the story of the AMG. So think about this way. 202 was a basically a big update on 201 mm-hmm. um so it was a 190e that was bigger fatter much more bulbous um the first uh, sporty model there was a 220 originally and 220 230 were four cylinders and then there was a 280 which was a six amg used to take a, a c280 sport so a sport package c280 take it back in in the in the barn yank the engine out throw a 3.6 liter stroked version of that it was stroked right 3.6 so, yes. liter um, it's a three point six liter straight six with an automatic, some sports suspension. Called it a day, um, and then the then when it came time to replace that at facelift time, uh, the inline became, six became a V six. Mm-hmm. Yeah, That's and funny. AMG had did exactly the same thing, <laughs> which was vomit in their own mouth. Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. and so they said we have to do something else. <laughs> yes, and they so they put they crammed the f- brand new M one thirteen V eight in there. Mm-hmm. Um, and this was interestingly enough, the car's historically significant because it was the first AMG ever produced on a regular Mercedes production line. Yes. As opposed to starting with some other car and then sort of Frankensteining it. And that was a result of AMG in inter- being acquired by Mercedes. Yep. And I've, so this was either the beginning of the wonderful thing or the beginning of the end. I've, I've never been in a 202. What are they like? Holy shit. Magnificent. Really? Yeah. So first of all, the regular 202s, the C220 was a fucking nightmare. It was really, really slow. Mercedes four cylinders, other than the Cosworth engine, I would say, other than the original M102, this this short stroke uh, four cylinder, were not great. And that 22 was gutless. The 23 was terrible. I've never driven one. I don't think I've ever driven a four cylinder Mercedes. Other than your Cosworth. Fancy. Um, So the eight valves were okay when they went to 16 valves they just became really coarse and the same way that bmws did yeah. so like an m42 is just a ugh, right. terrible little yeah. motor um and so the 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 beauty of that car was you can get a straight six in it in the same way you could could have the 201 um but it, the 202 got a lot heavier and it was just a lot more bulbous and big actually i have a picture i can show uh, of my 201 and 202 right next to each other and the size difference is significant how much heavier um, well, my 201 weighs 28 and change, and my 202, granted, it was a C43 with a V8, and it was 3,400. Still, though, holy Big shit. difference. Um, but that 4.3 liter, so we all kind of laughed back in the day that, you know, BMW had an S54 out, which was, you know, 7,600 RPM, two cams, Vanos, all the shit, and it was 333 <laughs> horsepower out of 3.2 liters, and then Mercedes took their magnificent four cam, variable valve timing V8, to pull, pulled all the money out and made to a single cam per bank, three valve per cylinder shit pile that needed two spark plugs per cylinder just to pass smog. <laughs> and we were like, what a pile of shit. <laughs> Turns out, first of all, when you're maintaining they're indestruct- them, they're, they're indestructible. 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 That's number one. There's nothing, there's to, break. nothing to break. <laughs> and yeah. then number two, 
that motor, especially the 4.3 had like, it was a 4.3 liter V8 that made 280, 260 to 280 horsepower. AMG took it, put cams in it and a different intake manifold. And it was 302 horsepower yeah. and 302 horsepower in a car that's smaller, a foot smaller than today's Civic is a fucking monster. Yeah. Um, it's so. pretty spicy and it's surprisingly similar, but also surprisingly different to other Mercedes of the same era. And that was the part I was most surprised about is that the car feels meaningfully different from a 124, which I spent a lot of time in recently and a 129, which is about the same fastness, but the way the throttle is calibrated and the other magic of a 202 is that it has like a forklift size turning radius. It's shocking how it's small ridiculous. the turning <laughs> radius is in this car. It's really um, <laughs> Another victim of the Volkswagen Mark 7 sale was my mom because my mom... I gave her, her my C43 yeah. AMG and then had to take it away from her because of all the stories that I heard from everyone where she was doing 100 miles an hour through school zones. I mean, it was bad. So I put her in a, a Mark 7 Golf and her first reaction was, this fucking turning radius sucks. And I'm like, no, no, no. Turning radius is great. <laughs> the problem is that 202 could turn around in its own parking spot. I yes, mean, it's like a forklift. E- even with a V8 in it. Yes. That was insane. Yep. So it's one of the sort of defining characteristics of this car is you turn and you're like, wait, another fucking two yes. turns. Yeah. Squeak. Yeah, but it's nice. um I think it's a little bit of a secret car. I mean, that's part of the reason why I've always liked them is that it to me feels especially the six cylinder ver- AMG version feels like it's halfway between a Mercedes 500e and an E36 M3. Yeah. Like it's a smaller more athletic Mercedes. It still is recognizably Mercedes, but it's a lot more athletic than most Mercedes are and then of course the noise with the 24 valve in line 6 it reminds you a lot of an S52. So I I think it's a, a, a nice way to experience a, a vintage Mercedes that's not quite as, you know, aquatic as they usually are. What about nautical. which? OK, so now you're a couple, excuse me, a couple weeks into owning a C43. Mm-hmm. You like it better than the 36? Uh, too to tell? I mean, I love the noise. It just it sounds makes wonderful V8 noises. The quality changed the drop I and mean, when this is the era when daimler chrysler happened and so they were trying to cut costs from cars and so the interior is not as nice of a place to be it's just a little bit lower quality it's lower rent and so i miss that character from the pre-face c36 lifts, yeah. yeah the pre facelifts so just like the two tens are like this the four i uh, e-class is the same thing the facelift is not as nice as the pre facelift how they were actively However, that fucking motor. <laughs> that, I mean, I'm sorry. I, see, I've never driven a C36, but I've heard them. Sure, they sound great. But when you're in straight six land, I want a manual. And yeah, yeah. I want give me like, just give me an S50 B32, like an, uh, just a any BMW straight six, not the S54. But um, I want a manual. When you put a V8 in it I'm with that much torque in a car that that's that little, now it's just a muscle car. Yes, it definitely has a muscle car vibe. All that having been said, the everyone knows, I think now at this point, that the transmission, the six-speed manual transmission from a Chrysler Crossfire or an SLK really fits bolts right, bolts in. right no to the back shit. of that V8. I know. Really? Yes. Here's the other thing. Is you know what else bolts right in? It's the, the exact 5.4 liter version of the same engine. <laughs> well, here's the, here's the trick. You take, you pop the heads off, you put the 5.4 block underneath it. And so you keep the AMG valves, sp- valve springs, all the rest of the stuff in cams and the intake. And now you have the 5.4 made... 349. 349 horsepower, but another like 75 pound-feet of torque over the 4.3. It was like some huge difference. But you with those cams, you wind up closer to 400 horsepower. It's like, that's... Can you imagine that motor? 400 horsepower with <sighs> a stick. Yeah. Wait, did the, the trans will take the torque? Yeah, uh, reportedly. Uh, no, I mean the, I mean, the guys crossfire. do the, oh, the crossfire box. What was the crossfire box? Crossfire uh, box, six-speed manual was that, that was also used. I don't know. Is that probably get I don't get drag one of them. Yeah, well, whatever. It's German. Germany. It's not that much. So I mean, what was the top motor in the crossfire? Didn't they? Did they do a supercharged one, or is that only the I SLK thirty-two? No, there was right. I think there was. Crossfire? Yeah, I don't but they're either the SLK thirty-two AMG that was supercharged three point two liter V six probably makes the same torque as mm-hmm. a five four V eight. So, or uh, makes I know a guy who has swapped uh, that transmission onto the back of a supercharged one thirteen one thirteen K, which has you know four hundred and seventy <laughs> horsepower. He said it hasn't exploded, so <laughs> that's fucking rad. So I, it's yeah. also an option. <laughs> I absolutely. So my C forty three was a little bit of an odd duck because it was available in silver which is your car white black other black <laughs> metallic black okay <laughs> obsidian obsidian uh red imperial red and that's it right I'm, except except i found one on craigslist that was blue gray market 
So that's what I thought. So I'm going to just go look at this thing. It was a 98, so first year. They were 98, 99, 2000. Yeah. So it was first year. I went to go look at this car, drove an hour, and there it is. And I look under the hood, and the paint code's 199. And 199 no, is... 199 one, is blouse one eight, uh, 189, sorry, which is black opal. And I'm like, this car wasn't repainted. What the fuck? So... He's got the window sticker. It shows it as black opal really? with Which no blue paint charge at all. So I'm like, this is really bizarre. The car in the middle of the test drive, I find out the hard way traction control doesn't work because I boot it and it throws itself sideways and I <laughs> turn it to a drift. He's in the backseat. My buddy's in the <laughs> passenger. He starts screaming. And I'm like, sorry, I got this. Do this for a living. And then I'm like, if I don't have traction control, there was no light. What was going on? I hit the cruise control button, no cruise. And I'm like, this is all done by the ABS unit. Yeah. And so I slammed on the brakes and had no ABS. And I'm like, dude, I don't know what the fuck is wrong with this car. No light, no ABS, no traction control, like no stability, stability control. And I got it super cheap. Um, and I, it took me forever to find the problem, which was actually crossed brake lines. Um, they put the brake lines factory, into the They put the brake lines in the wrong way. On so the pump? On the pump. No shit. Yes. And this is after I replaced pump. I blew, I went through it so many Wait, tires. it had never been a part? Like the act, that dated when the car was so built? Well, I mean, someone could have done it yeah. like well, it, by the dealer or something like there's that. There's a bunch of weird shit that happened. First of all, the car was three months old and it was wrecked. And it was a big crash. Airbag deploy, deploy, whatever, blah, blah, blah. It wasn't totaled, but it did have a big wreck. Yeah. And then the guy, the day he got it back, sold it and got another Mercedes. And that's not a good sign. Um, then it came, it went in for twice for, for brake work. When I got it, when I figured that, I pulled it home. I'm like, what? The ABS light goes on, and I start the car, and it goes off. And I turned the key once, and I realized the ABS light came on and went back off without the key on, without starting the car. And I'm like, that doesn't happen. ABS will only go out once the car's running. Voltage is stabilized, and it's over 12 volts, and it does this little computer check. And then I realized that the ABS light was going on and off with the airbag light. So I pulled the cluster out, and sure as shit, someone cut the wire and cut the... Uh, the solder basically in between them and jumped it. Assholes. Right. So now I'm like, okay, this is fucked up. So I put it all back together, right? Start the car. ABS light stays on. Read the computer out. It says I need a brake light switch. Okay, check. Brake light switch is bad. So, because it's got two poles on it. One that the stability control computer uses, ABS uses, and the other one for the lights. Okay. So I replace it with a $12 switch. Boom. Everything's great. Totally fine. Ha <laughs> ha. I fixed it. We're all good. And I'm driving in the rain and everyone comes to a screeching halt on the, on the highway. And I get into ABS and it locks the front right up and drags it and wouldn't let it go until I let completely off the pedal. And then the light came on. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? Read the faults. No faults. Everything fine. It took me six months to figure this out. And how I finally figured it out was I put a new ABS module in it. I, went, I was looking at wheel speed sensors I, to thinking maybe they're cross-wired. Something's fucked up. And I finally pulled over on, on, on the road by my house and did a brake check and flat spotted a fucking another brand new tire from it because it kept doing the same thing. It would lock front right up. Um, and then I pulled into the dirt. I was really pissed. And I turned off stability control and I go to flip a U-turn like under full throttle. I'm going to incinerate these tires. I was so pissed off and it locked it straight ahead. I floored it and locked that front right wheel and dragged it through the dirt. Holy shit. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? The only reason it could possibly lock a front wheel under straight line acceleration is if, is if it thinks it's the oh rear wheel. God, no way. Can't be. So I pull the brake lines off, pull the pump out, and then under the pump in that car, under the ma is the mount that also unbolts. And under that, I see the the hoses are reversed, and when they reverse, they fit perfectly into the into the pump. <laughs> and I'm like, you have got to be fucking kidding me. Put them back the other way, car's perfect. <laughs> Like this was either somebody drunk at the factory or it happened after that first crash, but there yeah, was and they were putting it back together yeah. and the dealer tech, you know, some yep. kid. But there were a bunch of complaints about ABS lights and whatever and somebody just bypassed the whole thing. Anyway, oh. so I wound up, I called Mercedes historian and I'm like, hey, I have a black opal two, uh, C43. And she was like, we never sold those in the US. They were special order only. And I'm like, it's not, I have the sticker. And she's like, it's gray market. She's the same shit to me every time I called her. Uh, and she looked it up and they made 1,425 C43 AMGs for the US. Wait, they're that rare? That rare. I didn't know that. Yeah, I know. Holy shit. All, all of them wound up in Bay Area. You see them all the time here. It's very <laughs> weird. Like they made 1,400 of them, but 2,000 wound up being sold in San Francisco. They're <laughs> everywhere. Um, 
And of the 1425, 14 were Black Opal. Huh. There was a run of 13 in the first production week where they fucked up and they made them. And then one of them was special ordered. That was a special order car for 99. So mine was one of four, one of 14 total, but one in a 13 run production. Car. And I saw another Black Opal car that wasn't your yeah. car, street parked in Vacaville, California. I was in places. touch with that person. There were four of them that I found. And the craziest thing is that I, when I had mine, I got a call from a guy who was McLaren's PR dude, JP, if you know him. Oh, yeah. Sweetheart of a guy. And he calls me and he's like, hey, my buddy's buying your AMG. And I'm like, huh? I'm not selling it. And he's like, it's on eBay. I'm looking at it right now. And he's like, I'm like, that's not my AMG. He's like, it's blue. And it's got 163,000 miles on it. Isn't that your car? I'm like, it sounds like my car, but it's not. I pull it up. Identical to my car. Same interior, same same spec, same everything. And I'm like, that's really weird. But I looked the VIN up and it's not my car. And so he's like, my buddy just bought it from you. And I'm like, I'm telling you, it's not my fucking car. <laughs> and he calls me back a day later. and He's like, you're not going to believe this. He saw the guy had seen my article on my car in the Star Magazine had one back in the day and was super excited about it. He's like, I want, I want my car back. So he found a blue one on eBay and bought it. And when he added it to his insurance company, they already had the VIN on his file because he bought his old car back. No <laughs> shit. <Yes. laughs> what? That's what? so fucking cool. But that's the kind of shit that happens when there are only 14, 14 of, them, of them, right? Yeah. 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 The dude bought his own car back. God, that's um, nuts. Yeah. So my car's now in LA. I, I love There's another one down there too. That's that color as well. Belongs to a photographer. Oh, really? Yeah. Cool. Oh, black wow. Opal. So, so there's like, shit. it's a small world of yeah. these things. Yeah, no kidding. It's not that many. Right. right. Crazy. Um, I had no idea. Yeah. Why, yeah. But, but anyway, uh, beautiful noises. I'll post an acceleration video. It was 5.8 to 5.9 to 60, although it felt way faster than that. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Are they still halfway affordable? Yeah, yeah, dirt cheap. Yeah, really. yeah, especially compared to 500 each. Shut up. Shut up. They're yeah. very, expensive very expensive and you don't cars, want Sam's one. Yes. You no. can't have one. No one buy one. No. Uh, Many things break. Terrible. Spectacular steering. It is definitely the really? highest maintenance. The steering Still is a box uh, or wreck? It's a box and it's hydraulic and it's really? fucking un... It's, you go drive Bullshit. this car. Bullshit. Yes. Is your car? Yeah, it's Ta go, texture, go road really? feel, beautiful effort curve. You feel the understeer because it's all it does. And then it's got an open diff and it'll do unbelievable one wheel peel could, but you, could you opt in and let it slip no really no mm -mm. really yeah it's kind of a, a stupid Weird. omission on that car it was it just this market or somewhere else like could you get it in europe i yeah. bet you probably uh, could as an a la carte thing there wasn't there's i mean the u.s market is always super inflexible there's like right. option package c1 and c2 right. and one of them's like yeah. headlight washers and xenons and the other one's like a cd changer and a cell phone and, and this was like, a sixty thousand dollar car yeah. right in yeah. in 98 it was really expensive and yeah it, when e36 m3 was 35 yeah, yeah. So think about that. I mean, right. we're you know almost twice as much money, and the options were xenons, xenons, CD and headlight changer. washer, yeah, CD changer, cell heated phone, seats. heated no, seats were standard. standard. In the, yes, there's one other one I can't remember what it was. Rain sensing wipers. Yes, which is paired with the um, wipe with the headlight. The joy headlight. on your face when you realized what it was. Yeah, I mean, you I remember like yes, car, yes. My car was complete. loaded. It had the xenons. It had the uh, it didn't. It had the CD changer. Shit. Mine yeah. still has the Motorola StarTac in the uh, center it console. Really? It doesn't function. Though. Oh, you got to make it work just so it goes. Yeah, I know. I love on. that. Because my, e, my first 500E had that. And I would leave it on permanently so that when you turn the car on, it would make the beep through the speakers. The, I, what I also love is it had the, the, the digital key that my minivan has exactly the same key. And you flick it. It's, it yes. cranks until it starts. Yes. Like yeah. that was poof, crazy yeah. shit. I love that feature. The uh, E38 uh, also did uh, that. Yeah. And... Some motorcycles do it as well. How's your headliner? It's been done. It's been done. Yes. Headliner's been done. Valve they cover all, gaskets have been done. They, 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 That's it. Those are the two problem areas. Uh, crank, posi crank position sensor also. Oh, yeah. They go. Yeah. They go. Uh, Those did. are the only things that ever fail on these yeah. cars. My valve covers had galvanic corrosion on them and had a, one of them had a hole through it. What? It had just rotted. Really? And it was, yeah, I, I was pulling out. I'm like, what the fuck? And uh, a mechanic friend of mine said, yeah, you'll get arcing from the spark plugs over enough that will, it'll, it'll arc, it'll charge the valve cover and then arc from this one spot on the valve cover to the, to the, um, it's just worth through to it. the, uh, the, the firewall. <laughs> like a spark <laughs> plug <laughs> electrode. Yeah, yeah, I don't know if he was like crazy or whatever, but I've, I've never said it had a hole in it. I had to buy a new valve, a new used valve cover. Yeah. Um, weird. And those, I mean, those engines were using so many things. They're basically free ML 500s yeah. and E500s. Everything. E yeah. Everything 430, 500, all those So wait, the rest of the car is basically unburstable? Yeah. No shit. Yeah, great. Oh, yeah. I mean, I've heard some bullshits about transmissions on those cars, but 
which is a perfect time to put a manual in. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, that five speed, <laughs> sometimes they would blow up in, because that transmission was also used in the Jaguar XJR, and I think they licensed it to someone else. But that five speed automatic was used. It's a, it's a much more, uh, it's less dim-witted mm -hmm. than the four speed. Oh, yeah, before. it revs the shit. The best thing about this was, if you think about this, this is the AMG's first sort of like regular production car. Yeah. And they realize if you're spending $60,000 on a car that was contemporary, the size of a contemporary Honda Civic, with a fucking V8 in it, you're not concerned with fuel economy. And that was led to two things. Number one, it's geared stupid short. Like short. three grand is 70 maybe? Mm, 75. You know? In a 4.3 liter V8. Really? Yeah. So it never needs them. to downshift. Holy shit. It never needs to downshift ever. Yeah. That's on the highway, which is fabulous. And also in normal driving, your two modes are snow and normal. And that it's NNS and everyone <laughs> thinks it's sport and normal, but it's no, no. Snow is, um, it starts in second gear like all Mercedes does, but normal starts in first. And in just keeping up with slow San Francisco traffic, three to four grand. Run! You're barely going anywhere. It's awesome. Also yeah. gets twelve miles per gallon. <laughs> uh, no, it's fine. It's twenty. I got twenty four on the way back on the highway at sort of 75, 80 miles an hour. That's not bad. It's, as it look, if you're buying a, an AMG, yeah. I don't want one of these cars that's bleh, bleh, like choked down to twelve hundred RPM on the highway. Yeah. yeah. It's a genuinely good car. car, especially for the money. That's why I wanted a daily one because the last one I had had thirty. 33,000 miles, I felt terrible yeah. using it. This one has 100,000 more miles, so I'll actually use it. Yeah, I've nice. given the opportunity, I'll, I'll, I'd buy mine back. I love that car. Well, let's it. go for a drive. Fuck this um, podcast. Bye. <laughs> no, that's not true. You just went for a drive. I did, yes, quite a long drive. You, mister, everything I do on Instagram is in stories, so if I'm not constantly paying attention, I'm, I don't know where the fuck you are, because it's all, well, I don't know. all your history of doing illegal things is deleted. This is what the kids do. <laughs> they do stories. What's the point? How, how, how old are we? Are we that old that he's a kid? Wait, how old are you? That's rude. Shit, really? No, you can ask Never her. Everyone at this lady. table looks her age. Well, very young. She's a 94-year-old woman. What? This is, this is the... Oh, really? Matt he's 94. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You um, look like my son. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, Christ, that went downhill quickly. Anyway, um, Hello. so you were in Europia. Yes. Um, a client had a, well, it was supposed to be a 911, but he sold it. Uh, and so he said, would you mind driving the Yaris GR instead? But I've rented a house in the south of France and I need to get the car from where it's stored in the Netherlands down there. So. I drove it. I'm sorry. Kind of what? what? To you? Oh, well, every week, really. Just last week, I ferried Delahaye over the Alps for my friend who lives in a castle. <laughs> what? Derek, I'm sorry. What? This, your it's life amazing. is fucking nuts. I know. First okay, off, I, know. I, have, I have so many questions. First off, uh, Yaris GR on the, on, the, on the auto route, is it quiet? Loud? Um, the you hear the noise? engine. You okay. always hear the engine. It sounds great. I like the inline three noises. It is limited to 230K, and the yeah. limiter is not very elegant about how it does its thing. <laughs> so you sort of are like, and it shuts you down at 230, and then it waits for the car to decelerate to 220, and then it lets you go back to 230. So there's oh, this sort of like fantastic yo -yo. Can you keep it at exactly 229.7? I, I I, I yeah, that's the, yeah. the goal, is to try and sort of engineer setting yeah. cruise control. I actually didn't. I should have done that. To, to, but we never, there was too much traffic. Traffic, honestly, yeah, to always. open it up for that long. I don't think we were able to VMAX for more than three, four minutes at a time, mm. if that. Too yeah. much traffic. So, yes, it has a, but it's like stable enough. Two hands on the wheel above like 200, but up to 200, it's it's happy. It's and 124 easy miles enough. an hour for you for using freedom units. Yes. Freedom units. Okay, second question Is it good? Is it as good as everybody says? The car? Yeah. Uh, yeah, hauling ass. I mean, it's just fantastic. It's epically good. Which like, spec <laughs> did you have? Yeah, I don't know. That's a good question. <laughs> It had red brakes. Yes, no. It was a yeah, car. I think it had wheels. Okay, so here's the thing. This is a perfect thing. You've driven GR Cornholia. Uh huh. Yar uh, a Marizo or regular? Or both? Uh, that was that was a Marizo. That was one of the prototypes. So it's technically, and it was missing a bunch of like sound deadening and some other shit. It was a prototype. Marizo is fucking awesome. I drove Marizo Circuit Core. Yeah. And I also drove Marizo and Yaris together for that Icons video. And I think. I think I'm the only person who's ever driven both together and like, you know, any, the only journalist who's done both. Okay. But you did Marizo versus Civic Type R. You did an article on that. Yeah. That was a barber like two months ago, I think. Okay. So I did Yaris, Corolla, Civic Type R, Golf R, and Lancia Delta Negrale. Oh, fun. From your boss from, from Easy Me. Yes. Um, that was fucking great. Fireball you, shooter. And yes, that was fucking what, fireball. What, 
Yeah, you yeah, have to so fire the out of the really? we'll put it into with it's oh, a totally it. it's a complete coincidence. It's like totally just happenstance. Uh, we had the racing drone up in the air and I'm just coming around the U-turn at the at the end like onto the skid pad at the end of the streets <laughs> and I'm moving. I mean, I'm going as fast as this poor thing would do and it had fucking stupidly grippy tires on it and it sounds amazing. The car is unbelievable. I never thought a front wheel drive based all wheel drive like shitbox 80s car would be this fucking amazing on track so i'm moving 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 and i hit the limiter in second coming around the corner right as the racing drone is descending from i don't know thousand feet he's coming like you know 80 miles an hour straight down towards the car and does this turn right as i hit the limiter and upshift and it blew a six foot fucking flame out the back <laughs> <laughs> and then he flips around and just follows me as i keep going to the front straight And we so we all watched the 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 drone shot later. They were like, "What? How did?" Because it, it happened right <laughs> as he got like six feet above the car. This fucking enormous flame. It was unbelievable. Anyway, um, do they all do that, or that just no. load up no, and spit? This, it? this no, one, this one is very, spicy. Sp okay, very modified. So here's the thing on this 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 episode. Toyota has been amazing to work with from a car supplying. Set. I did an Icons on GR eighty six. I did an Icons on Supra, and now I did an Icon Icons on GR Cornholia and Yaris, and it's. Not just because they're all amazing cars. Wait, 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 wait. Cornholia or Cornholio? Are we male or female? Both. Marizo is Cornholio. Okay. Regular one is Cornholia. Interesting. And all then right. the core is Corn Cornholius. Oh, interesting. Is a serious one. Well, anyway. so they. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> and look, all three of those cars absolutely deserve the episode. But one of the hardest things, as as I've explained to you in the past, is getting cars yeah. for that thing. Like Ferrari pulling that fucking 296 on me after working together for 18 months on getting it ready. Toyota was like, what do you want? And I'm like, okay, can I have a Corolla Marizo? And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, can I destroy it? And they're like, what? And I'm like, well, I, I want to do a rally stage on it. And I'm going to fucking destroy the car. And they're like, oh, yeah, you want to, we'll give you a circuit for that. Because that's a, that's a crusher. That's a, you know, a prototype that we have to crush anyway. And so we'll send that too. And I'm like, oh man, you guys rock. Can I have a GR86? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, okay. Can, oh, can I have a GR Super Manual? And they're like, yeah, yeah, we can make that happen. I'm like, can I have a Prius? And I want and a that pony was, and a large cake for my birthday. <laughs> but that was at and the point at which Twitter's PR was like, what the fuck are you doing? And I'm like, okay, hold on. I really, really, really think that the GR, uh, that the Prius will be faster around the track than the Delta Integrale. And they were like, uh, are you kidding? And I'm like, you got 200 horsepower, modern suspension and tires. Like, I think we yeah. could fucking do it. Yeah. I and so we were supposed to have the Lancia Delta Integrale Evo martini five which 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 ecme owns is perfectly stock on like period rubber and i have driven in them and i'm like oh, i'm just gonna get this ass kicked well it it blew up so i'm it, sorry it, an italian car sir no i know a turbocharged 80s italian no 90s sir italian no car. i how put my very foot terrible. down yes. the well, that's what happened somebody put their foot down and the engine <laughs> went boom so anyway so we wound up with this with the red delta which was a, I love that car, but you know the the Martini would have matched the Martini livery on my watch, which also matched the Martini livery that was on the <coughs> douchebag. What on the yard? I got this on Etsy for five dollars. I'm Suck sorry, it. a cheap douchebag uh, is still cheap douchebag. Douchebag it is. Um, but this, so I, it was just going to be perfect that we were going to have two white Martini livery cars together with the Marizo, and it didn't happen. So they, they Francesco, the owner of Isimi gave me the, his red delta and this thing is a fucking monster. thoroughly modified holy shit <laughs> like even randy got out was like i need a cigarette like randy said a lap time in it and of course it crucified the prius so we didn't include that in the episode we got a respect for toyota because come on that's just yeah, not fair right. um but the fucking the the delta was faster than the fucking gr yaris wait what yeah it's the modified. delta Negrale was faster what was around it, what was the delta pushing what did it make what horsepower was yeah i don't know 700, what 900, like 3,000 pounds? No, probably. No, they're lighter than 2,700 pounds. And I feel like it was, my guess is 240, 250. Okay, that, that makes it's sense. It's fucking I fast. Guess. Yeah, sure. It's about as fast in a straight line you as the Yaris that, was. that little? I mean, there were 200 and 200, 210, at 210 out of the box. I don't know what the fuck is in that thing. I mean, you know. I mean, it's got a different turbocharger. The exhaust system is new. Yeah, engine management. That. I mean, that engine, like a hot uh, engine in a, what is the, the Automobili Amos, the, the modified. Yeah. I'm sorry, what yeah. did you just say? Word salad? What? Automobili Amos. Yes. 
Automobile, yeah. Automobile, yeah. Automobile, yeah. Fabri Bubri. Bubri. It's a, it's a, like that resto modded uh, Integrale that uh, they make it two doors and they put oh. a carbon body oh. on it and stuff like cool. that. Okay. Those things, I think, make like 350 horsepower from the same two liter. Anyway. Yeah, ready. Either way, either way, it was fucking fast. It was about as fast as the, the, the Yaris was, but it outgripped it by like a factor of 10. Yeah, um, I mean, it had special tires on it and coilovers. It had RE71Rs on it. Yes. It got coilovers, and yeah, he was right. really upset that the camber plates hadn't got there in time. Because <laughs> he was really hoping to cheat his way to... Well, I mean, but it, was only f- it was four seconds behind the Marizo, which, by the way, Shh. broke the record for the fastest hatchback ever at Willow Springs, beat only by the Civic Tough. Wait, you're doing this on Big Willow or Streets? Streets. Okay. Yeah, so I'm sorry. Everything's at That's Streets. Right. Um, but the Yaris was 5.4, I think, seconds slower than the Marizo. And so I had a circuit there. That was the one that we were supposed to be able to destroy, but somebody pre-destroyed it. So the previous people who owned it was um, uh, were doing marketing for Toyota and returned it with a clutch so fucked that we couldn't even get it onto the skid pad for really? a static shot. I mean, Holy it was shit. fucked. Um, so we had, and we coaxed it up the hill and just did a stand up with it. But I really wanted to see what that would have done relative to a Yaris because the Yaris we had had open diffs and the base Dunlop Sport Max, which are just not all that aggressive. Huh. So what, you don't know which one you no, drove was? I don't. What about the other one that you drove? Because you've driven two GR Yaris's, right? Yes. Uh, I think they were both the same as each other. Okay. But so, I don't know what that is. <laughs> so that's right. I mean, it's okay. <laughs> I, don't, I don't love not Palo's. my car. Palo's like, just it's a fucking idiot. Um, <laughs> no, so here's the thing. That car had no grip at all. I mean, it was... it was. This one was on four S's. Oh, well, that would fix that. But then it had open diffs, and I was really surprised. We, I didn't know going in what spec it was because it had red brakes. But red brakes plus should come with Michelin's on the you know on the UK spec would come with Michelin's, which would mean diffs. And that in this is a Mexican spec car, and it had red brakes, but clearly open diffs. If you throw it in a corner, it would just start spinning the inside front. Um, and so it was not even close for that poor little Yaris. Yeah. Um, but the Corolla is ten times the car. And I, I sort of mentioned this in the Icons episode, but the Corolla does everything better than the Yaris does. Everything. They're dead even a straight line. Marizo versus GR Yaris. Um, and then five and a half seconds around the track. Sure, whatever. But Corolla steering is really good. Way better than Yaris. The, the angle of the steering column in the Yaris is a little bit truckish because, you know, the dash to axle is so short. short. Yaris. Um, and it's got, Marizo has that fuzzy steering wheel that's amazing. Shifter's better in the Corolla. Like, the Corolla's a, a better car. Wait, the shifter's better in the Corolla? The Corolla is a truck shifter. Holy fuck. I'm sorry. Oh, well, you compare it to a Type R, yeah. Yeah, but if you compare it to so much, like, it's this big, clunkety, badunk, badunk, badunk thing. The Yaris is worse? Did you have a problem with this? I didn't have a problem is he, with this. Is he a stuck-up Oh, my God, shut up. No, seriously. So it's... It's <laughs> it's, it's, it's It had... Longer throw, I think, and now I'm doing this from memory. Yeah. It had longer throws than the Yaris did, um, but the way it engaged was a really nice ramp up and effort and a solid thunk in with no bushing compliance, no like BMW E okay. soup. Yeah. Whereas the Yaris was a shorter throw, but it, the engagement didn't feel as good. It was r- more rubbery. Huh. I don't know. Ours, ours, one of the things they told us about ours is that it had been, excuse me, it had been apart and together like 40 times. Mm. But it felt um, it was really it, it was really high effort going into the synchro and like moving mm. through the gate, and it was really clunky and weird. I mean, I was kind oh, of surprised. Yeah. That doesn't that. sound representative. That doesn't yeah. sound representative. Huh. I mean, they do not like a fast two three, no. um, especially under lateral load. So yeah. you try for two three, <laughs> and grinds on the way in. Well, I noticed I because I went online and started looking at stuff, and apparently like a lot of people money shift them. Like it's really really common to just miss the gate on them because the gates move just under load. But, yeah, I mean, I'm glad I didn't have. Yeah, we. I had really no problem with it. I, I think honestly the my my worry about that car is that the clutch is going to be a weak point on really them. the the one came in totally fucking fried yeah. and the other one stunk all the time i mean the marizo every time i moved briskly off the line the 1200 rpm whatever it was it i would get a whiff of clutch and mm. i was really nervous now that i thought during the shoot we're gonna have two dead fucking grs yeah. No, and I did a couple like 7,000 RPM. Like the launch in the drag race that we did was a red line rev limiter. You know, when we launch all wheel drive cars for testing numbers, I sort of go in and build boost by rather than just sitting at the limiter, just and right as it hits the limiter, dump that clutch. It did a four wheel burnout and fucking left. Really? Uh, no problem. I mean, this was on PS2s or what, what was it on? Cup twos. It did a four wheel burnout on cup twos? Yeah. <laughs> what? Lit them up. <laughs> Shit. Um, that this whole video shoot was a 
fucking nightmare. First of all, it's foot the day before we is got there. there ever, are any video shoots not a nightmare? Some were worse not, than other ones. This was, this was unbelievable. Than, did, really? I, did we talk about this? I think we show? did. Foot and a half of snow the day before we got there. 67 mile an hour winds the day that we were shooting. They blew the roof off the fucking cafeteria at, at Willow. Um, snowed during the shoot. So in the video, you can see at one point an over the hood camera where it look, it's looking through the windshield that's mounted on the hood. You can see the fucking snowflakes. Um, our Airbnb canceled on us because this stupid <laughs> bitch was like, hey, our driveway's a foot and a half, uh, 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 like a, a football field and a half long and it's got a foot of snow in it. Here are the name of 17 companies that we've used in the past to shovel the snow. Oh, Do this on. at your own expense and we she were told like you to have it plowed i'm like listen this, this is the same thing as saying hey i'm renting my house you spent two thousand dollars to rent the house for two days yeah. and uh yeah i lost the key to the front door so here's a list of a bunch of locksmiths and uh you have the locks changed and send me the and, and we'll pay, and you pay the bill fuck you so we had a fight with her we lost her two thousand bucks which pisses me the fuck off and so we lost our airbnb and the forest service that was up on the road we were, that episode was supposed to have a gravel stage in it that was the whole point is i was going to destroy the circuit so the circuit's broken we lost our airbnb and then <laughs> they didn't issue the filming permit because they were behind because of all the storms so we were like oh fuck now what so that whole thing went wrong right as the car the the circuit shows up with a fried clutch and it was on Arctic X ice tires for some God unknown reason. Because really? People who fried the clutch were doing a, a thing in the snow in it and forgot to tell anyone that they left snow tires on it. So we're swapping tires and then realized the thing was done. But it was snowing. It was windy as far. It was an, the whole, everything went wrong. Yeah. Um, ah, it's all right. I mean, we got everything yeah. we well, needed out of it. But there were, um, you know, we I really wanted to do some a better job at the drag race, for example. We, we couldn't. But, um, but Civic Type R. Oh, yeah. Talk. What about it? Speak. Oh, God. Oh, so many things. Um, okay, so the last Civic Type R, help me here. Was that the FK8? Which one was yes. it? Yes. This yeah, one is the FL5 or something? Yeah, the one that looked like Optimus Prime Scrotum, right? With so many wings and flip ups and <laughs> Did things. Did you just say what I think of that? There's yeah. so much going okay. on with that car. Yeah, it was uh, hideous, fine, but amazing. Right, but fine. It was, well, I, thought it was, I thought it was fine up until like the 11th, 10th, where it was amazing, right? Just fine? Car left me cold until you really beat the shit out of it. Maybe why would you a not ever beat the shit not ever be be beating the shit out of it and b yeah fine. i don't know you know okay. remember how i said last episode um i had an integra type r like yeah are you motor is fucking unbelievable don't have to beat the shit out of it to have it reach up and grab your nipples right i um, finally just drove one no oh, they suck i miss you one like no Okay. Well, oh, no. It's all the motor. The There's, rest of the car. Eh. Oh, know. disagree. Mm. I've heard they're assy. Oh, okay. have, mm. So yeah, I've heard they're assy. This one I was warned assy? afterwards. Assy, yeah. Oh, they're very assy. One of the worst. One of the worst rides I've ever felt. Oh yeah, and dampers total, are filled with like fucking cement sand. or some shit. I was telling that, and one of the yeah. guys was like, "Yeah, these are fucked. It's not supposed to be this way." Apparently, Bullshit. they really. Bullshit. It was bouncy, like, and it bounced. Okay, bounce, they're not supposed to be bouncy. Oh, it, bling, 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 bling. it was like no. it was like the dampers were actually filled with sand. No, no, like they should be filled. They should feel like they're filled with like soft sand, right? <laughs> like it, it's it's That's a soft, to gentle sand. It's supposed no. to quick sand, or yeah. no, no, no. I mean, it's like it's a it's really firmly damped, and there's a fuck yeah. of a lot of spring in the back, and like it, you know, it does the Honda thing where you like you, you know that the front of the car is basically made of tin foil and flexes like a motherfucker, mm -hmm. and the gearbox is the gearbox, the Honda gearbox, and the motor's amazing. And it's like, there's, you know, it's, I mean, we're still talking ITR here, right? And like, you, you want, you want it to be like, what are you, what are you looking at? You, no, I'm looking, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm listening intently. Oh God, that's amazing. I'm amazing. No, I mean, like you, I wanted it to be, I mean, my problem with it was like on a B road, on a back road, like first and second gear. First gear is too tall for type B roads. Yes. Right. It's off, it's off VTEC. Yeah. You're at like five grand waiting for the thing to fucking wake up. Mm -hmm. And because it, you know, it doesn't come on to power until the whoop, whoop, and that thing doesn't doesn't happen until like 35 or 40 miles an hour. Yeah. So you end up in the back roads between in first. Yeah. And, you, and, and then, which means no, but so, so you end up, you end up either driving the absolute fucking balls off the car on a back road, which is great in first gear in first gear and, and like in between first and second. Big and it's got drop. so much roll stiffness in the back and so much rear spring and so much rear damper that the moment you, you know, change anything or hit a bump or fuck up the car just goes whoop and then you're, yeah. you're catching it fix it which is fine but it just but then you run out of revs then you, you run out of revs power to, you can't, yeah, exactly. so, hey. so I, I drove this car yeah. it's Honda's I think it turned 8,000 miles or 6,000 miles while oh, I was driving oh the PR the press car the, the yellow the, one the marketing car yeah holy fuck I mean I was so scared shitless for anything to yeah. happen to it but I took it on back one back road and was genuinely scared to death by it because I could you can you tell you can just tell yeah. by all the motions in the back it's going to come around and what I realized was in second it wouldn't have enough torque to pull it through and in first 
first I'd be at the 99 million RPM limiter and I was just like, this isn't going to work. Okay. So, so first okay. one thing, first thing I changed about that car. That doesn't sound good at all. Oh no, shut up. It's great. The motor so, was amazing. So the first thing I changed, is beautiful. first thing I changed is the gearing. And I've been told that if you like back the VTEC engagement point down, yeah. like software back it down, it works, but fuck that. No. Um, so shorter gearing, uh, US seats suck. Like suck, suck, suck. How is, suck is, a how is it word, at, yeah. in fifth gear though? Is it something where you can just put a shorter ratio on it, or is it going mm, to be like, like shorter final? I mean, they're, they're actually stacked just, pretty close. It's yeah, just you want really to be shorter. close. So, so, then, so if you do a, a short first. final, then the fifth the gear would be, be like, too short. It's it's like an E30 you should do the whole box. It, it it would be like an E30 and three on the highway with a 445. So you'd be turning like four or 41 at 80. But the rest of the car That's is it? exactly. See, the rest of the car is so good mm -hmm. that you don't care. It's loud as shit. Do people um, oh. just do individual ratios in the box instead of doing the final drive? I mean, they do, but it depends on money, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I do that. Um, the other big th big problem with it is like the how the intake picks up on the right sides so when your passenger gets all the intake noise and that you get nothing. Me the fuck off. Yeah. And uh, the driver paid for the car. Shouldn't yeah. They yeah. get the Rio GT4's right? biggest oh, problem. Right hand drive car. You know. But, oh, okay, um, yeah. fair enough. But so, so the base seats are just kind of like flat benches. Mine had um, instead of JDM, the you know the big wing back, the fucking the Recaros, the mm -hmm. Recaro, blah blah blah. Um, I don't know though. It was good. The first time I drove it, I bought it from our friend Colin Comer. You and, did? Yeah, Colin had that car? car. Yeah, it was the the He's story a, behind it. Story behind it was amazing. He hmm. found it. Woman That's calls off him. Brand. Yeah, woman he calls him. Shelby. He drove a. He had a uh, a GSR, I think, when he was in college or okay. after college or his twenties or something. Okay. But a woman calls him out of nowhere and basically says, "Hi, you." He wrote. Do you remember when we were at Road and Track? He wrote a collectible classic or buyer's guide, whatever the fuck we told those things on the ITR. Woman read the thing, calls him, says, "I have one. I bought it new. It's got 110 k on it." And you seem like you like it. I think you should have this. I need to get out of it and sell it. Got to know her a little. Um, bought the car from her. Brings it up. Wakes it up a little. She apparently had walked into the dealer in, I don't know, it was an 01. Walked into the dealer whenever the fuck she bought it. And the dealer was like, ma'am, no. And she's like, I like the yellow one. The one that looks like a Fast and Furious car. And they were like, no, ma'am, you can't drive it. And she was like, oh, what? Okay. Well, what do I need to do to drive it? And she said, buy it. And she went, okay. And she went home and she came back with the equivalent of a briefcase cash. And the guy was like, K and then she left with it and then she used it as a daily car for 10 and put 110 miles yeah. Yeah. yeah she's amazing she's a hero awesome. yeah she actually follows me on instagram and we've gone back and forth over email but point is um colin bought it and the first time i drove it was that there's a big uh big type r and nsx gathering uh, that happens kind of floating around the united states and in i think 2016 17 it was a road america and I went up there to cover the thing. I was hanging out with Colin and a bunch of the Type R people and PD Cunningham from Real Time and all these other people who like know all this shit. And I've never driven one. Colin's like, oh, you should drive it. And it started raining. And at Road America in the rain, everything gets slick as shit. And Road America is like four miles long. The right. front straight. Front straight is like a 9 and 6 turbo. So he's 170 miles an hour. Like it's Jesus. long, right? So I got out in the rain and I'm like, well, you know, it's a car that's designed to everybody says what it's supposed to do. And like, and then there's this big, long fourth gear carousel on the back half of the track. It's like four miles long. Like, you know, the track is big enough that you can be like, I was there one year and it was snowing on the front street, raining on the back street, and then sunny in the middle. <laughs> it's a big place. So I'm going through the carousel and I'm like, well, what happens if I lift? And it just backed down the hill in this great <laughs> big, like, whoop, slide. And I spent the rest of the lap by myself because it's Road America and everybody just goes, oh, well, you know, rain. Mm parks the cars so i spent the entire place to myself on this track day with this with an itr in the pouring rain and the wipers just going flap 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 and it's it is it is i mean it's a front drive e30 m3 but spicier and more in your face mm -hmm. and probably and sounds good yeah sounds and actually frankly like i mean i had three e30 m3s and i probably shouldn't say this and somebody out there will hear it and get really they snippy suck. You don't suck, but the ITR is a better version of the idea, I think. Okay. Um, it's a better execution of what it's supposed to be, right? But anyway, um, yeah. I'm gonna. I'm now I'm going to be the one that's crucified. They don't no, suck. No, I that mean, that S14 sucks. Every time I've interacted with an E30 M3, it has been disappointing. Yeah. That's the thing, I think. I think. They I don't hope live there's up a the place the... somewhere where I get to experience one where it's appointing instead of disappointing. Your old car, when your dad had it set up properly at Grattan, was un. Fucking believable. That car set up properly on a track is magnificent. There, I think the problem with the things is it's the BMW problem in general, right? Like all of the hot BMWs have always been so concerned with being really good everyday cars mm -hmm. that they make real shit Sunday drivers. And so when they step out of the realm of people having to use them every day, 
all the stuff that makes them normal to live with. You get into them on a, you know, on a back road on a weekend and you're like, Hey, grab my ass. And the car's like, we're going to be chill about it. Yeah. And I, there's just something missing. But yeah. it, like when you, I mean, toward the end, like the one that I ended up, the last one I had was a 89 with like 60 K on it. The white one? The white one. Yeah. Mm, and I stuck that's a, the car. Yeah. I stuck a close ratio and a light flywheel in it and a bunch of other shit. And it got, you know, stupid and had a 445 in it, blah, blah, blah. But they're um, magnificent, but that I'd rather drive a 325. Should you have I, to mod, should you have to mod a car to see it's. Really no, that's why we get a 325i, and they're yeah. just perfect. I don't know the box. I have anyway, a, anyway, point is, I have a soft spot for them in the ITR, blah blah blah. But we were talking about so Civic Type R. Cars. So yeah, right. So um, I don't know what, what previous uh, one. So previous one, you started to say was kind of left your cold. This one, yeah. So the, the previous one at like eleven tenths, it would wake up. Mm-hmm. It was good. Motor left me cold. Steering was fine, but like at at the absolute fucking limit, the thing was just a delicious, wonderful, like just delightful, forgiving thing. And this car does that at, current car does that at like 70%. Motor mm. is a little torquier in the mid-range, a little louder, a little more intake noise, um, steering's a little better. Sounds. It's fucking huge. It's enormous. It's an Accord. It's, it's a no, bus. No, it's bigger than it's an Accord. A it's an Acura it's RL. It's the thing that eight Civic Type R. It's, I mean, <laughs> Jesus. I sat in the back, this is a perfect example. I sat, I set the front seat up for me. Move the seat back two two clicks from that, and then mm-hmm. sat in the back seat. And there was still I don't know what am I doing with my hand now six eight inches between my knees and the now. well, sir. <laughs> there uh, was yeah, some, no, it's there, enormous. I mean, it would, you could have driven a car between think, my knees and the seat back. Yeah, I mm. I mean, I, I looked up some of the stats. I mean, it's like basically interior volume of yeah. a seven hundred and fifty IL yeah. f- from the eighties. Oh, it's, I mean, it's fucking enormous. But. Fuck, man. Turns. Chassis on that thing. So we, yeah. we were at Barber, which is like massive elevation change. Every corner is uphill, downhill, off camber, blind, fast, or all of that. Mm-hmm. And first day was pouring rain, and the second day, so we had a, a GR Corolla with it, and the second day was dry. And in the pouring rain, I just looked around the Corolla, and like, you know, this, this does this, the diff does this, diff does this. Interesting, crazy, cool. And the mm-hmm. Civic was like, hi, I'm a car with a lot of roll stiffness and a lot of damper in the back, and also... You know, they were both on cup twos and it's just kind of like, well, all right, it's good. And then in the fucking dry, holy shit, holy man. Shit. I, my problem with the Civic is wheel hop. Really? Normal driving. Yeah. So, the, you know, I, I had, I didn't actually during that shoot, I never got a chance to drive the Civic Type R on the, on the track. What? No, Randy, what? Randy did that segment and we just didn't have enough time. Oh God. Look, we lost a whole day because yeah, of no, the I, bl- I don't blame you, but yeah. And the weather. Um, but it sucked. But I had driven. I, I wrote that script. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, I took a couple of really, really quick on ramps and drove like a genuine asshole enough to be able to write that. And then Randy, I sort of write the script, and then I won't tell Randy. And I go and get his responses. And if he agrees with what I said, then I just, you know, adjust the script as necessary and give it back to him. Didn't have to make any adjustments. I mean, it's front wheel drive handling benchmark without question. Yeah. It's amazing. But in the normal world, in in the drive, the axle hop was annoying in the wet in san francisco it was intolerable i believe because you're starting out up a hill you're you have no traction you're just trying to get moving and to the point where like it felt like it it broke i mean it was violent violent uh must have been cup twos this is bad the suspension full soft yeah crazy Um, and it did it did uh, the hop in and any mode didn't matter it was it was terrible curious if it does as bad on the base tire oh was it cup twos i I gotta, I gotta go back and look because yeah. I have two now, and I don't remember which one's which. The one that we had for the for the track time, which right. set the record to beat the Murizo. Yeah. I mean, it, which, by the way, it was a tenth off a Ferrari four five eight Italia. There is so much more fucking grip in the Civic than there is in the Corolla. It is, yeah. it is so much noticeably faster. Yeah. It's not motor, and it's all like most of it it's, is in the fucking front end, but the rear works. The yeah, moment you yeah. turn the car into the corner, it's just bam right there. It works. Randy was actually complaining about understeer and that I didn't write in there at all because mm, at Willow, speed, big Willow at the streets, everything was at streets. Oh, streets. He streets just puts couldn't get the car, car to turn. Yeah. Streets puts push into a car. Um, not the Delta. Delta would rotate under, mm. under, under, and the golf R holy mother of God. I never thought I would say this. Really? You can, you, so we did, we never, we didn't get it on video because we had a tire issue. So, in but the way it works behind the scenes is if it has Michelin's on it, we can film for two or three days straight doing burnouts, horrible shit. Nothing ever happens. If it's got a Bridgestone, you get a half a day. If it's got a Dunlop, it's got 10 minutes. Um, <laughs> and just tires fall apart on that yeah. surface and what we do. Um, but I did an 88 mile an hour Scandi flick. So there's one shot at the, in the intro where the golf comes ass out around a 90 degree corner. So we have the, the, the Corollas are coming th- sort of this way. Uh, we're coming straight down the straight and the golf R and the 
Civic Type R make a left onto the front straight in directly into the path of those cars. And I drifted it the first time ever. First time I ever sat <laughs> in a Golf R, I just lifted, turned in, got sideways <laughs> and lifted it. And when I got to the skid pad, just to see what the hell would happen, I lifted it, it was 88 miles an hour, I think, top of third. Um, lifted, turned in and got to full opposite lock, went down to second and did a huge ass out, full opposite lock donut in that thing. It's spectacular. That really? all wheel drive system, actually makes good on all of the promises that the gr4 doesn't so that 30 oh, 70 split even in the rain so we had snow yeah. right so i have a marizo on cup twos right. in the snow so it had no grip at all still couldn't drift under power yeah. unless i trailed it in got it really sideways or yeah. whatever and the, and the golf r is just so the like the the three basic settings on the corolla right it's uh front bias rear bias and like here you want so the it's answer 40 60 yeah. 50 50 right. or 30 70. right so the the rear the rear bias felt gimmicky to me and and work. you had to do stupid shit to do it to make it work and the front bias was like fine fuck it who cares and the the only way i liked it was 50 50. But. i don't particularly love it in either in really? any setting i just try think it on a, try on a faster track i'm curious uh, I did. So we drove in a Salt Lake City. It's really good. Yeah. Like the chassis is good. You can trail it, break, trail, break it in. It's very controllable. It will never bite you. Ass moves uh, on under trail brake. Oh, yeah. Like, that's brilliant. Yeah. But then once you're to power, it's just boom, yeah. back to understeer. I didn't I didn't love it. And I came away. It's funny. I went into that test expecting to love the Corolla and be like, all right, fine. It's another Civic. And it was flipped. Yeah. Was, I mean, the Corolla was... I, I also didn't drive the Corolla on the road. I so. was just going to ask you that. No. So you've driven... Yaris yeah. on the road and not yes. on track. Yes. I've driven Yaris on the road and and then on track. What was your on a your your viewpoint is so Sam is sort of like racy cars and sophisticated suspension shit and whatever else. Yours is old shit pile. No, yes. I mean but I mean but <laughs> yes, I mean yes, I mean fifties and sixties Ferraris. Shit piles. Tell Aston, me more. Well it's Ferraris, Aston Martins, all these other stuff, but fifties and sixties stuff. Right. So to get you even remotely interested in a modern car is a act of God. Yes. It also has to be genuinely good at the type of things that we most enjoy or that I most enjoy, which is like second Polonious. gear. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Felonious. <laughs> 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 no, second gear on a really twisty road and just like maximum pace on a bumpy road that's oh, God, tight. I love that shit. Yep. That's where the car makes me happy. And at yep. that, the Yaris is sensational. I mean, it just the, the mass and the dimensions of the car and the noises that you get in the drama. I mean, it just it does everything that I like a back road car to do. See, this is interesting because I think I'm halfway between the two of you, right? Because I, for road shit, I want old stuff. I want old stuff with big slip angle and skinny mm -hmm. tires mm -hmm. that oh, works. Yes. If, like that, halfway that, that loses yeah. at ten miles an hour below the limit, right? Yes, I definitely. I mean, like I had a Julietta Spider, yeah. for example, and I would, I would love that car yeah. because it's so easy to, to put it in first gear and go around a tight corner and just yeah. be at, at right. beyond the limit. So, I mean, anything that I can drive at the limit on a second, third gear type of road is a car that I like and. That car is like just unstoppably fast on that type of road. The, what? the, Yaris, the Yaris. The Yaris, yeah. yeah. Corolla's kind of the same way. But what did you feel? How was it? How was the Yaris just interacting on it, getting in as a car? Uh, to use it as a car mm -hmm. to cover distance in? Uh, Not I mean, even to cover distance, go to the grocery store. Oh, easy. Right? I mean, it's, any, any modern car to me is like that, basically. Like, what modern car would you say isn't like that? I mean, people bitch about this. Like, this thing is unlivable and it's, you know, it's. They're, but they're talking stuff. about that, right? I mean, yeah. the, the the bar is so <laughs> high, like everything's perfect. I but I the I, the I was my leading question there was I found both the Yaris and Corolla immediately enjoyable to interact with on a daily basis. Yeah. The only thing I don't like is the lag, the throttle lag down low. Oh, so if you're under two or twenty five hundred RPM and you go for let's say as as I'll do two to one with a double clutch flip throttle downshift into first for a speed bump or something. It's a full second of matted throttle before it'll respond. So you can't actually do it heel and toe. I got to come in, get off the brake, and boom. it's just. Did you so find that slow. was the bad in both of them, or did both you think them. it would? Mm. Both of them. And in fact, the Yaris was worse, but the owner of that car had installed this little device that uh, lives under the dash that actually over. Uh, it's got like five different modes, I think, and it it, um, it takes over the throttle mapping. So you get past it. So I did drive it in jumpy mode almost the whole time when I was driving it around town. And in jumpy mode, it's exactly like the Corolla is. So I think they got rid of whatever lag that they had put in. But the engine just doesn't respond under 2000 RPM. And, and you know, Why? I, I don't know. That. I, I see, I know. just assumed it, I assumed it was flywheel just because... 
Could like be. a three cylinder, right? Yeah, three cylinders have heavy flywheel. Yeah. It probably doesn't have all that high of a compression. No, it's it's high no, enough. It's, it's like it's, it's ten, ten or eleven, right? Yeah, it's ten or ten or eleven. I mean, just, what a hell know. of a time to be alive! Right, like, turbocharged cars <laughs> right. are running around with eleven to one compression yeah. ratio. It also could just be emissions. It could be that yeah. you know it just doesn't run. Yeah. Right. it's cami enough. With or whatever. modern cars, I always worry about yeah. like throttle response just being an artifact of them trying to control the, emissions. The only thing way. I can say bad about those cars because I love them. I would have a GR if oh, really? I would have a Marizo, but the Marizo doesn't have the back seat, and that's stupid. And I don't want cup two tires yeah. so i'd have a marizo and i put it on less grippy tires so i could slide it around have a little bit more fun but i want a back seat like a four-door car with only two seats yeah. kind of the stupidest thing in the world yeah. um i mean i love that it's stupid but mm, i mean um, the, the only only reason so ours showed up with showed up with a spare set of wheels and tires mm-hmm. and i didn't realize like the bar and the back seat and the, because there's this big you know there's a steel tube that yeah. runs right up off the where the back seat structural used to be. It's structural tube. that goes up and over mm-hmm. and it's it's a it's a little like bracket you can fit exactly four, four of the tires, wheels and tires yeah. right across yeah. it and hold them in place. Like that's neat, but fuck you, give me back. It's seat. like a cargo van. I mean, yeah. that's uh, the joke I made. In the other thing is that the world's the smallest cargo <laughs> van, right? I mean, four doors opens up with a big hatch, right, and you can't right. get anything in the fucking right. stupid. But um, the only dig I can say on those two cars is while we were filming, at one point I had to jump in the GR86 just to move it from one track to the other because we do some of the filming at uh, at Willow and then some at some at uh, Streets and some at Horse Thief, which is up the oh, hill. Yeah. I got into a GR86 and I'm like, fuck the Corolla, fuck yeah. the three series of yeah. cylinder, fuck the turbo. Oh, it's every time you get into a naturally aspirated mm-hmm. engine after driving yeah. anything turbocharged, you're like, fuck that turbo pilot shit. Right. I want a GR86 shooting brake. <laughs> um, I would, I would, I'm not kidding. If Toyota made a GR86 shooting brake, I would sell the Lotus. I would sell Beatrice the Shipbox E30, and I would sell if I had to. I, I would sell another car. Like it would. Oh, the E Golf. Perfect. It'd be the world's most perfect daily driver. Occasional rear seats, a hatchback in the back, rear drive, perfect balance, a 2.4 liter four cylinder, a big four cylinder with a ton of torque, 7,500 RPM. I am so in love with that fucking car and that's the only dig I can give to Corolla is I want that powertrain and rear drive in a Corolla shape. Isn't it funny how the details make a difference, right? I love the, I love the GR and I the last car I just... Uh, GR86? Yeah. Is that yeah. friggin' motor? Have you so have you driven BRZ slide? No, no. None? No. No. Oh, dude. Okay, dude, so dude, dude. here's the problem. Uh you could pretend I could see you selling your C43 AMG for for <laughs> a GR86. I just bought it. <laughs> no, no, no. No. I'm Think not about it. I'm not it. saying do it, but I'm saying don't drive one. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> what about Golf R? Wait, th- nah, I want to return anyway. to this Golf R <laughs> okay. conversation for a minute. Why was it good? Enabling. Okay, here's the problem. So we said, you know, we cut the, the episode was 24 minutes and we had to that's way longer than we want to be. Broadcast half an hour show is 22 minutes, right? So the fact that we're doing a 25 minute episode for YouTube is fucking not okay. But we always have a lot to say. I, we cut most of the golf R section down, but we left Randy's comments and it's like, it's not a thrill ride, but it's really refined. So you get in that car versus mm-hmm. the other one and it's, it's insulated and isolated and refined and adult and whatever. What transmission was it in? Six speed manual, which sucks. Does not work well with that engine's torque curve at all. It's geared because Germany, and they don't give a fuck about manuals anymore. Same thing with Porsches. It's geared so friggin' long that the car is so much slower than it would be with a DSG that it's maddening. Because I know if they put short gears in it, Why it would be faster. Why did you not buy as a DSG? What is wrong with you? Is we need a technology You car? need to be shot in the face. Oh, oh, that oh. A dick. Wow. I mean, that really, uh, yeah, well, I'm, <laughs> I'm very, very angry about this. It's a fine manual in that it's a manual but it sucks it's just not really not a good manual and the Hmm. gears are not appropriate for the car um but the overall experience is isolated and mature the handling is the best by of any any golf ever however that fucking infotainment system randy kept screaming that his hands were on fire because (laughs) because of the the every time you turn the wheel you turn the heated steering (laughs) wheel on you can't find any of the controls to get the stupid all-wheel drive system so in the in the corolla you have a dial that says gr4 on it and you go from it starts in 40 60 and you can go to 30 70 or 50 50 in a turn or press and it's done 72 menus, 412 presses, a rubber baby buggy bumper, uh, bumper, four Hail Marys and light a fucking joint. You can't get, it's so stupid. You have to go into, you have to be stopped. You have to go into vehicle and you have to go into settings and you have to go into vehicle settings. And from there, then you have to go to exterior. Then you have to swipe to the second page, hit brakes. And that's where the drift mode is. It's completely buried. And then if you fart the wrong way, it turns stability control back on. And then Randy goes right off the track. 
Oops, sorry. Now he threw it once into a corner. It turned stability back on. He hadn't noticed it for no fucking reason. And he went off. And he was like, what the fuck is wrong with this car? It didn't turn. Fucking Germans. So that car, as good as it is dynamically, <sighs> A, I think it's fucking stupidly ugly looking. Um, way better than GTI. But the infotainment ruins it. I would not recommend that car if at all. GR. I mean, C43. As a daily driver, it's an automatic. I yes. mean, that's, that's the only thing I don't love about C43 AMG. Um, but Corolla, Corolla and Yaris together were interesting. And so I, w I wish you guys had both experienced both in everywhere, but there is, I'm going to get crucified for this. I was trying to be nice. Also, re remember, we borrowed that Yaris from a guy who lives in Mexico who, sh who shipped it across the border so that I could ship it from, from Houston to Laredo. California and Can back. Can you say hero? Hero. I mean, absolutely. This guy doesn't, what? I've never spoken to him. Really? He's a friend of a friend. He did it all through his buddy. Same, his buddy is the same guy who gave me the Carlton. Who's like, hey, take my Carlton, whatever. And I shipped it there. So I shipped, I we shipped the, the Yaris over and shows up and the guy's like, do whatever you want through his <laughs> friend. And we do all this shit to it. I mean, the, the tires are hard as rock. So thank God there was no wear on them. Thank God we didn't break anything. The car was bulletproof. It was amazing. But I wanted to be a little bit nice to the yeah. guy. But in terms of in terms of Yaris versus Marizo, the driving experience, no contest. Huh. Marizo is an order of magnitude better in every way. And that was the surprise. Does that same period. delta exist be between the Marizo and the, the circuit? No. Uh, the circuit is... Uh, you were doing a, a bit 30, of an apples and oranges Right, comparison. and I didn't have them. I Remember, I, didn't, I couldn't drive that circuit right. there. But the circuit that was 30% back towards the other way. So the Marizo is way quicker. Shorter gears and, and more torque. Mm -hmm. Um and I think grip wise, I think the base circuit would have been similar to similar tires to the to the RS. But just as a car, seating position better. So everyone in the UK bitched that the, the RS has no headroom. It's actually not the case. It's actually the RS is taller than the Corolla is. But the seat is high. And so you have because of the the proximity of dash to axle, you have a steering column that's angled higher. So you naturally want to choke up on it, sit closer and higher. And then you start running at a headroom. And then the roof tapers almost four inches versus a regular Yaris by the time it gets to the back. And they did that for the, for arrow for the spoiler. So you have this sort of feeling like there's no headroom, even though there is, but you feel like you're sitting on top of it. Corolla, the steering angle goes from, the, you know, this to this, it relaxes a bit. You sit further back. It's a better reach to the pedals. Um, way better driving position feels like it's got another foot of headroom it doesn't but it feels that way it's got way better visibility because that yaris has those huge c pillars yeah the it's got a rear quarter visibility is poor yeah backing out into traffic out of a stall uh do you have a camera on that and the european ones have cameras yeah wait um, does the, and the infotainment sucks on that car too hmm? does the yaris still feel because the corolla felt oddly like it felt taller than it was right the seat there's something about the seating position and like the view out but does it end up feeling like a bar stool too Yaris is way worse. Yeah. Really? Way yeah. worse. Oh, yeah. Wow. You're sitting on top of the bar stool. Like you're yes. standing on top of the bar stool with another one and sitting <laughs> on top of that flipping. No, it is. Look, the Yaris is, it's like I said in the video, homologation gold card, right? I mean, and the coolest thing about it is it was a homologation car for a car that got killed. Yeah. Like Toyota killed development of it and still fucking did the homologation yeah. car. Yep. That is is so cool. Fucking cool like hats off to Akio Toyota yeah. on that he, he's a man of his word mm -hmm. he doesn't want everyone to think of Toyota as boring well you fucking nailed it you did it buddy job done and Go I home. really went into that having driven both cars independently worrying and I wrote the script and I was really worried that I was gonna have to rewrite it because when when I drove them together, so I, I booked two days extra in LA to go drive the cars in one day and then go fix the script if anything was wrong. Um, and my my ass had told me, I hadn't driven the Yaris yet. I'm sorry, I drove all the Corollas and I, my, I expected the Yaris to be a far better, more raw, fun car. And actually I had to fix all of that because the, the Corolla is better at everything. And that's what I didn't expect. Also, I weighed them. That's the thing. No oh, else. interesting difference. Yeah. Tell Thank me. you for doing me. this because we cut that out of the video. Tell me. No one Tell cares. me to get to it. Tell so me. So Marizo versus Yaris, both full tanks of gas, 333 pounds of difference. What? It's a big difference. Shit. 333. Um, and I don't remember what the real numbers are, but I, I have yeah. them in the, I'll put inserts in. 333 pounds is a lot. And then the Yaris is, uh, the Yaris is no faster at all than the Marizo. Wow. So How is that... 300 horsepower versus 257. A 295 pound feet of torque versus 250, whatever it was. So it got a boost and boost. I'm sure this was engineered then. Oh, they made oh, the yeah. choice to give the And the shorter gears. The, yeah. the, 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 there, are, there are three different gear sets in that transmission. Yaris has a gear set, Corolla has a gear set, and Marizo has a, a separate gear set. 
Well, wow. that's fucking commitment. Yeah. You know, where most car companies are loath to even change a final drive ratio. They have yeah. three sets of gears. Um, and they all have different height tires. That's the other thing. <laughs> so it's like 225, 235, and 245, all 40 18s. Huh. So they, they did suspension revisions to those cars. They really didn't. T- fuck. Who would think Toyota would, would do this? Yeah, right. I it's love it. It's working. For me. Oh, I want to do. Oh God! I want to do a little thing. So we, oh, we had a couple God. shots where we had all the cars lined up, and I was going to make that make everyone the jump. Episode. I'm like, ah. this looks like a fucking Toyotathon ad. Like we're not, we're not, we're not doing the Toyotathon <laughs> thumbnail. Um, but seriously, I'm just kind of looking at this lineup, going GR86, GR Supra manual, yeah. uh, and you know, 86 is my favorite of the bunch. But then Corolla, Marizo, and um, and Yaris, and then Prius. And by the way, that fucking Prius moves. Like it's not only fucking quick, but it turns the, the ass end rotates. I so wish then the problem is the drivers. No, nah, they were never this fast. This got rid. This knocked off two seconds, zero to sixty from the previous fastest one. Wow. They've gotten faster every time. Yeah. So remember, I think it went from like a one five to a one six to a one eight, and now it's a two liter. Um, and they keep getting like every every time they get bigger, they get even more efficient and then faster. Um, but this thing genuine, genuinely quick. For, who would have thought? That. Who would have thought in the dog days of everybody giving up on performance cars and enthusiast cars, like the the shining knight in armor would be Toyota? It's always the one person in charge has yeah. to be a right. car person, yeah. right? So BMW doesn't have a car person yeah. in charge. So, um, who does? Like, who's got like, GT? Like Porsche doesn't have car people in charge except the GT, GT, GT division. division. Yeah. So that's why you get a stupid four cylinder Boxster that nobody wanted. Nobody will ever want. No one. It sucks from start to finish. I'm sorry. Um, and then you have Andy Preininger, who's like Quintus. He's one of us. He yeah. wants to go haul ass on a back road and GT3, GT3 RS, GT4, GT4 RS. Come on. Yeah. They just keep getting better and better and better and better. Um, and yeah, you got to have a car person. So who we got left? Mazda. They come Mazda, out with a new yeah. Mazda 6. It's going to have a straight six in rear wheel drive. And somebody says, kill it and yeah. put it in a CX90 SUV. Okay, I'm sure it's a wonderful engine, but come on. Yeah. We're so close. We're so yeah. close. Like put they it could in have, the new RX7. Right? But they could have, but they could have and should have put that. Can you imagine some Mazda taking over for BMW as the quintessential straight six manual transmission sports sedan with rear drive? Come it would have been a thing. It would have uh, been a thing. If so butts, close. candy nuts, you know. So uh, I don't know. So wait, so you haven't driven the Civic Type R anywhere but streets? Uh, Civic Type R anywhere but on the street. Oh, dude. So Civic Type R, I drove all around San Francisco like oh, a jerk. Oh, fuck. Go find a fast racetrack somewhere. Um, yeah. Oh, I th- holy shit. I think it would be... A, look, I know. I mean, I yeah. can turn it into a corner and you feel that back end. I mean, you sort of... But it's, it's not just that. It's like, so the, the adaptive dampers, there's something they did with it. Like, A, the, the difference in damping. A car driver wrote something like, the, the stiffest setting is fucking useless and it's it not. Is. It's it is. It is until you're on a track. Co- in certain conditions on the track. Yeah. It's useless on the road. On the road, yeah. But there was... God, like, there's a, there's a set of chicanes. There's a fast chicane in the middle straight of Barber that's like uphill 100 miles an hour like maybe eight nine inch curbs mm-hmm. and you have to be on both of them if you can and the car would come up there like third fourth gear bop 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 and you could just hammer them and it would it would just blow the shock off and just didn't give a fuck and it just kept going and the faster you went the more it worked yeah. it's it's a thing man try it i was really surprised at randy's criticism of understeer it's because streets at it's streets, but you could get the Delta to turn in and and be neutral. You could. It's Randy. Oh uh, yeah, but okay. The, that's Randy an Indy likes with a bunch of bunch of power. I don't know. I'm just saying, try it somewhere else. And but. and suspension stuff too. Yeah, I mean, so. I yeah. I mean, I I didn't notice on the road. It felt re- yeah. It felt like the rear end was playing until you got to the limit, and then it was. You know, pushed, I mean, look. So. It's it's a front drive Honda with a long wheelbase. It's probably going to push a little, but yeah. it's no. re- it reminded me a lot of like. I don't know, man. I mean, there's just, there's enough, actually at the limit, of it, it's the only fast Honda I've driven since the Type R, since the ITR that like had some of that spice in it. But yeah, yeah. no, it's really good. Anyway. I yeah. can't wait to drive the Integra Type R. Yeah. Uh, Type S. Type, Type S. S. Yeah, yeah. Um, because I like the Integra, when you, the base Integra and the Civic SI are yeah. contemporaries and I much prefer the Integra to the Civic, yeah. which I did not think I would. Yeah, damn um, it. Is it, oh yeah, true. Yeah. I can't wait to see what they've done with this. Yeah, real those, curious what you think. Yeah, and then, well then they have to go. Super, imagine that car super handling all drive. <gasps> I mean, Shod. you know, we're not not huge huge Honda fanboys on the show, but uh, you know, uh, super handling all drive is the holy grail of all wheel drive systems, yeah, especially for front drive based stuff. Yeah. And if they put that in that Integra as a Type R, it's over. It's just over for everyone else. 
I mean, knowing what that platform can do with front wheel drive. It's so big and it's heavy and. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Well, well that was the thing. I think that it was, what was it? We, it's light. Yeah. It's like Corolla. It was, it, it was, was 30, 40 pounds. The difference between the Corolla and the, yeah, it's is not 30 much. pounds. 30, Randy made fun of me because he was like, it's only 30 pounds. You've, I've seen you eat more pizza than that. And that was, <laughs> wow, real, buddy. Listen, wow. Randy, Saying the quiet part out loud. Yeah. Holy he wrote shit. that line. I mean, he just gave up. Come on. The, the other thing when you see you guys. Spicy old man. Yeah. He, he was, say, he had a, recurrence of his covid cough and so we wrote it into the script because he kept coughing and i'm like well let's make a thing yeah. um and i had already written the whole like you know 2020 sucked we but we all did survive a pandemic we need to be thankful of that but remember in the middle of shelter in place toyota dropped this fucking gr4 system and a gr yaris that was the, the only light of hope the only good thing that happened in 2020 <laughs> and then immediately said fuck you it's not coming to america so it was like oh my god there's hope there's hope oh wah. and then so randy shows up and he's coughing he's like uh, yeah i've been coughing since since december <laughs> i'm like oh that's totally going in the script um <laughs> how the fuck did i get here talking about <laughs> um Somehow something about what well, you asked me a question about I don't fucking remember. I can't Whatever. remember anything. You remember it. Fact check us. Were you talking about the uh Integra? The Civic dampers. Yes. Oh yeah, the weight. Yeah. And that's what he yeah. he said in I mean, the Corolla is a small car. The Civic is the size mm -hmm. of a neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it and it it's still it's thirty pounds. That thing is that's a really impressive But it doesn't have four wheel drive. No. Uh, but you know. I mean yeah, but to be able to have a full a car basically the size of a seven series with that weighs thirty two hundred pounds. I can't or whatever believe it's that big. It's, it's huge. So big. It's oh, huge. God. So big. Which kind of sucks until because that like if if you imagine it as sort of the ideal daily, and then the size thing becomes an issue if you're in. An, we live in San Francisco. Yeah, where so, this, the size thing is relevant, but right. elsewhere in the United States, it just doesn't matter. And although Anthony Esposito has a has a Maserati Quattroporte. Uh, oh God, he does. Love it. He's got a GTS. It's that's, fucking spectacular. That's such an Anthony choice. But he also has another victim of the Mark Seven and a Half. Yeah. Uh, Mark Seven <laughs> GTI thing. He has his Mark Seven GTI. Uh, he's got a Sport with perfect spec, or whatever, and he's got two little kids, and it's great until they have to go somewhere. Right. And he's like, I just need a little bit more room, and Civic Type R is kind of the perfect yeah. car for him. So we we've taken like mm. ten and twelve hour trips. So we have a seven year old, nine year old girl, and we've taken like ten and twelve hour trips in in our Mark Seven. Mm -hmm. And it's enough, but just barely. barely. And I keep thinking, like a year or two from now, when it's, it's up near the end of the warranty, like just Civic Type R, you know. Yeah. So okay, well, on that note, we've all decided the next everyone's next car for their babies is a Civic Type R. Need a school bus? They've got one. Except if you don't have babies, you have a C forty three AMG. Oh, yeah, could be worse. And I'll just keep pushing my electric golf cart <laughs> down the street <laughs> and being pathetic. Um, this has been episode number ninety four. Of the Carmudgeon Show. Part of the Haggerty Podcast Network. Join us next week. Unless we've been cancelled by then for some terrible offensive thing that we said. Would you like to try? <laughs> no, Derek just did a really good job. You guys are very no, offensive. I, mean, I hope you get cancelled. Canceled. What? Get you cancelled? Yeah. yeah. What? Say something terrible. Oh, no, I can't. I think you should. I work for this company. So what you're supposed to say is something <laughs> terrible so that we can cut. And you'd be like, okay, ready? I'm going to do it now. Uh, and then leave them hanging. <laughs> Sam. God, there's so much I want to say, but instead I'm just going to say. <gasps>